Welcome to Veronica Live, and we are here with a Veronica Live family member that we absolutely adore, Ron Hart. He's a libertarian op-ed humorist, and we love having him on. And of course, every week you can find his columns on uh, dailycaller.com. Ron, welcome back to Veronica Live. Great to be here. Well, John and I are on pins and needles awaiting this verdict of the in New York of the most incredible trial that's been so honest with so many amazing guests and we are on pins and needles. So are you are you feeling the same way awaiting Trump's <laughs> verdict? Will he be guilty? Yeah, the kangaroo Yeah, the kangaroo court should come out any, any moment now and the uh and the foreman, the jury foreman will probably pull the verdict out of his pouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, it has just been yeah, horrible. The judges' instructions. They kept, you know, the judge kept sending them instructions back there. Yeah. The instructions said said convict Trump. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird like, deal there. They got, you know, it, it'll be over. Everything happened during this trial. There's about five things that will be overturned or should be overturned at a higher level. That, but he doesn't care. He wants to. This thing done before November. It's a show trial. It has nothing to do with justice, nothing to do with you know due process of law. No one even knew the crime. Uh, no one still really knows the crime. Uh, he did mention a couple things toward the end, and he kind of went against a, a case with Alvarez where he he said that there's four elements of this crime, and and Alvarez it says all four elements have to be proven to find somebody guilty. He basically told him, so well, now you can just find one element of this crime <laughs> of the four things uh and you can convict him on the whole thing so i mean it's all sort of different small things he's done along the way he's one of 24 judges supposedly randomly drawn yet he's gotten every trump case so far you know and uh obviously he's he's, he's conflicted uh with his daughter being a, a democrat fundraiser he gave to stop trump and other things like that so america i think that that's america needs to see this and it needs to see it for what it is it's, it's the travesty of justice well, and your your column this week, of course, is brilliant because, I mean, it's so hard to, to listen to Democrats because um, you talk in your column the threat to democracy, and, you know, apparently Trump is that. Dr. Jill's been making the rounds saying Trump is evil. Uh, so I wanted you to talk about some of the real threats to democracy, and, and you have this laundry list in your column of, of 10 things, and I can't even look at Merrick Garland, and he's like your number one on list i yeah. you know he, he's so awful to look at and and what he's done to trump you know especially with that lethal lethal force that we found out was authorized to go into mar-a-lago i mean my my stomach twisted and turned when when i read that i i mean these people are they they're sick i think they want trump dead so where do you yeah, stand on this, really Ron? Because you got legal force in Mar-a-Lago, and, and Trump's protected by Secret Service people, right? So this is like government on government. It's like a, it's like a civil war. <laughs> you know, there's an FBI down there with a lethal force. Same thing, you know, P. Diddy's house, too. And they, they don't need to do this. This is, you know, it, 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 Roger Stone, an 80-year-old man. I mean, they, you know, they, they, they tell CNN they're going to do the raid. This is get CNN out there. They raid the house down in Mar-a-Lago. They put they they basically witnessed. I mean, the uh, uh, evidence tamper by putting top secret documents, slagging yeah. documents, right for their for their pictures. I mean, it, it, it's really sad in many ways. But you know, the, the one go to thing the Democrats say is they don't have a record to run on. The, the inflation's awful. Every, the average family's paying eleven thousand bucks more per year to live, heat, air, oil, gas, food, and they and then they got the border. Which is a disaster, and and then these wars, these wars of choice around the world that we're we're, we're fomenting, and helping, and, and 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 messing up. So he's got nothing to run on. So they say, well, Trump is a threat to democracy. And you ask uh, the liberal, you know, what do you mean? Give me an example where he's threatened democracy. They say, well, he won't leave office if he's if he's if he's if he loses. We don't know that he's already done it once. He left under. You know, a very, very suspicious election, but he left, right? So what, what makes you think he won't leave the next time? What, what are you talking about? And that's, that's your old case. So you look at the things the Democrats have done. What Merrick Garland sends DOJ goons to school boards across the country because parents are complaining about something. He sends them down there to, to rough them up. Colorado and Maine try to take Trump off the ballot, and that's a threat to democracy. It takes him off the ballot. RFK Jr., 
polling around 20 percent in the Democrat primary. They won't even let them on the debate stage. They won't give them secret service protection. That's a threat to democracy. They won't, what, what, 20% <laughs> polling in the primary? You don't, you don't even let them on the debate stage? I mean, uh, it's a threat to democracy in a big way. January 6th, completely unmeasured response in terms of these solitary confinement guys for, for essentially trespassing and acting, you know, acting wrong. Yeah, there should have been something done to them, but not, not solitary confinement. Yeah, Absolutely. for three over three years. Yeah, it's what, horrible. Yeah, and then you get on the list of other things they've done. You know, obviously the free speech on campus, uh, you know, the things they've done with the Second Amendment, and, you know, uh, uh, NSA, on the search and seizure, uh, you know, they, these, these, these pre-dawn raids with AR-15s among, uh, you know, the FBI agents for over 80-year-old men like Manafort and, and Roger Stone. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just it's out of control. There's only one person that can knock it back a little bit. The only hope we have is Trump. So, so, Ron, what do you think of uh, Trump's appearance at the Libertarian uh, Convention? Yes, I'm dying to know that. I think he, I think he, uh, his willingness to take adversarial uh, uh, audiences on is admirable. I think you know, yeah. obviously, he, he tried to get their vote. He won't, but uh, he, there's a lot of his policies are very libertarian. I think at his core, he's a libertarian. He can't say that. You know, you cannot leave the you know the comf- comfortable confines of the Republican Party because it's just such as you know these uniparty systems. They this duopoly we have in, in parties. You, you got to stay within there. But there, there's elements within the Republican Party that are libertarian. I think Trump, at his core, is pretty libertarian, which is you know, less government, uh, less intrusion, more free markets. And I think he's that way. And I, I like the idea that he went there. I mean, they, they, I think he wooed him a little bit. Yeah, I, well, such bravery. And and on that note, what about going into the Bronx? I mean, if you watch, you know, because I, I listen and to and watch all kinds of the left networks and and listen to their shows they're like oh my gosh nobody's going to show up it's going to be horrible and then it was actually so nice <laughs> and then when they started interviewing yeah. some of the black people they're like yeah we want him you know so <laughs> yeah kill him you yeah, twenty five thousand in the bronx a hundred thousand in very blue new jersey i mean there's an element i don't think it went up there he might but there, there's an element of, of 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 disgust with the government it's gotten too big it's gotten too expensive. It's gotten too unaccountable. And and people, and look, Trump's no day in the park. Look, he has no personality that is really just totally endearing, uh, you know, uh, uh, by itself, right? Uh, but he is strong. And I don't know how many people could endure this much lawfare. This oh, much gosh. Onslaught of litigation against him. How many people could withstand that? No. I'm going to show this morning with this, this liberal as well. If he's innocent, he'll be, you know, he'll be exonerated. The, 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 <laughs> Process is the punishment, right? Oh the yeah. Process. You put your family through this, the money it costs, the stress right. it puts on you. I mean, they know that. Don't, don't die like a fool. Like, if you're innocent, you'll be let go. You know, like, okay, let. And, it's, and, the, and they, he said it was a fair trial. I said, well, let, why don't we just try Obama in a county in South Alabama and see what you think about that? And put put Obama up in South Alabama, you know. You know, a big Republican district down there. And see what you think about Obama being tried down there. It's, it's the same thing. Could you imagine that? Oh, my gosh. Just the thought. Oh, uh, and since you're a libertarian, Ron, what about the Chase Oliver that won um, at, at this uh, at this event? You know, it, you know it's, 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 a, it's a fool's errand. A lot. You know, I, if I'm in the swing state, I vote, I vote Republican, obviously. Mm-hmm. If, I was in, you know, if I'm in uh, you know, New York or... You know, Utah was Republican or New York, which is Democrat, I vote Libertarian is a protest vote and just, just do it that way. I've done it uh, a few times when the, when the election wasn't close. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, we, we're part of ideas, uh, perhaps unworkable in, in some places. But at the end of the day, the Republican Party has really come more our way. You think about the way okay. it's come anti war, anti war, pro pot, pro, you know, pro uh, uh, anti war on drugs you know that was a big part of what we were saying for years war on drugs to waste of money people are gonna do what they want to do that fentanyl flowing over the border and you know people are no, doing no less drugs today than they were 20 30 years ago it's ridiculous it's, it's you know seven trillion dollar mistake I mean, you put people in prison for life or some pot and now it's legal i mean it's it's just you know it, it, the prohibition did with al capone in chicago you can't you just people are gonna do what they do you can't put chicken wire on bridges Keep people jumping off the bridge and say, look, you're going to do drugs. You know, knock yourself out, but don't, you know, don't expect me to pay for your rehab and don't expect me not to shoot you if you try to steal my lawnmower. 
<laughs> Did you know this Chase Oliver before the convent, the Libertarian no. Convention? No. So no, no. okay. I'm not that involved, really. You know, right. I'm, I'm the Rand Paul type within the Republican Party. To nasty. I'm, I'm more that type of uh, Libertarian, small L. A small L. That's so cute. Okay, so the most hated person apparently in the world is Trump. The second most hated person for the last day has been Robert De Niro. Do you agree with that statement, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> what you know, he's a you know, he always has these sycophants around and he's telling everything is great. And as soon as he goes in the streets and, you know, and does his stick, and he gets one little pushback. From a, from a <laughs> he <order>. says, F you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he becomes unwound. Oh my gosh! <laughs> he's not used to any pushback on his on his talking. You know, he's talking. Everybody agrees with him around him, and then anybody pushes back on him, and he just could not handle it. It was funny, and that was that was a campaign event. This is what this, you know, this 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 Democrat Party has become a bunch of angry people. And all he basically said was, "Don't vote for him." Because he, he's not going to leave office. Yes. <laughs> you kind of don't want to leave office, but there's no, nothing in the world's going to keep him from not leaving office. I mean, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, it was, I it was funny that you had this high caliber actor trying to read from a piece of paper. <laughs> written by probably a 25 year old staffer. <laughs> and just getting all yeah. discombobulated. <laughs> Oh my no! But the oh, F the spokeswoman, this 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 uh, lady who's uh, Trump's new spokesperson, is really good. I've seen her out there on the on the circuit, but she is young, she's sharp, and she's very articulate. Uh, she's done a great job. Look her up. She's she's the new campaign spokesperson. Right. Uh, well, and I wanted to ask you. I'm sure you watched uh, Biden at the Morehouse event, and it was just you know the whole speech was keep the black man down it was so horrific i felt bad for the graduates because normally these speeches at least are you know a moment where people are trying to unify and you know cheerlead you on to the future as you take on the world you know by fire so so what did you think about his speech yeah he talks about white supremacy but there's no one man in the world who's done more to debunk the notion of white supremacy than you know, than Joe Biden, <laughs> he, you know, he's, he's, he's a complete idiot. And so, you know, it's just pandering. If I were, if I were a college educated black person, I'm sitting there and said, okay, everybody's got you down. You're, you're terrible, but you know, we're here to help you. You can't do it on your own without us. You can't do anything. It's only for us that you do. And these other guys who own businesses, et cetera, they're going, they, they kick you in the throat. It's not true to that. It, 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 it's demeaning. You know, it's like telling a woman she can't do something or, you know, it's just you don't do that, and it's pandering. I think most of the more bright among the African American community is starting to see through it. Their, their vote has been taken for granted for years. Nothing's been done mm-hmm. for ditto for the Jews. You know, and and so I think there's there's a there's a there's some, there's some daylight between uh, them and and their their most uh, fervent vote voting block, the Jewish community and the blacks right now, given the Palestine situation with the Jews. They're starting to really rethink. The woke, the, the 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 group, the left, far left of the party, and, and blacks who are really independent thinkers, unwilling to uh, you know go with the party line, are starting to say, "Look, my life is better under Trump, and I don't need to be pandered to. I, I'll I'll do it myself. Just give me a fair shot." So you know, it's funny, Ron, is you and I are both the probably the same age or similar age that when we were growing up, you know, you could you know the aspiration was you could even become president of the united states someday you know <laughs> and that was an aspirational yeah, thing. now it's like they're sitting there looking at like this clown is the president of the united states <laughs> That's pretty low. well yeah well obama became president right so you, know, you think of the post-racial era like what yeah. else we need to do here That's and now we're just stretching to now they did now get the lbgq community they got them all riled up there you're, you're, you've been put upon you're the next minority that you know we're here to protect your rights etc because you can't do it yourself you know, that's just that's just demeaning to, for them to do that and it's just but it's their core thing they basically divide people among uh uh you know aggrieved groups both real and imagined you know that uh, you've been screwed over late women uh, blacks have been screwed over Hispanics have been screwed over you know we, you, you, you know you, you don't get a fair shot we're here to make it fair but they don't do anything to make it fair, right? They, they, they just get in power and do nothing with it, really. So, do you do you really think it's going to be Biden 
uh, that's on the ticket seriously because mm-hmm. all of the polls are bad uh, the dems are just you know so upset now uh, will there be a hail mary on their end yeah it all depends on june 27th right that early the service debate's ever been held they're actually being held before the primaries and being moved before the conventions which is uh very unusual uh in the history i don't think it's ever been done before and uh, i think he'll, he'll get the jerk they got a kamala problem they got the uh, problem because they can't jump around Kamala, right? And go to Gavin Newsom and and keep their you know liberal bona fides. You know, so they they can't do that. So they're they're in a tough position here. But if you have a total meltdown on June twenty seventh and is clobbered by Trump, I think they, I could see them pulling them. I don't think Michelle wants to do it. I don't think uh, you know there's, there's too many people that really want to. You know, they're they're waiting to do it. Gavin Newsom, you know, he's, he's got his choppers, you know, his chiclet teeth, and his, his car salesman smile. <laughs> Uh, ready to go out there, but he, but, you know, and, and it's, it would be a bad fight. If I were them, I would probably would do it because you know, if you get after June twenty seventh, you know, well, he's too old, got to pull him. You know, you don't have time to really degrade the candidate, right? It's such a short cycle between then and the election. You, you know, they'll come in fresh, they'll be new, they'll be exciting, they'll re re-energize, energize the Democrat Party, and 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 you won't have time to really go after them, right? So I, I kind of hope it doesn't happen. But the truth is, it's not a very deep bench, right? You don't have right. any. There's no Sam Nunn's. There's no Zell Miller's there. There's no great leaders. Uh, there's no Bill Clinton's anymore. I mean, uh, so I'd take a Bill Clinton over uh, a lot of the whole Democrat Party and some of the Republicans. So what do you think of this thing in Ohio where, where apparently the Democrats' convention is after the – the registration date in Ohio, the last registration date to get on the ballot, <laughs> and you have to be nominated. So now, now the Democrats are in a panic, and apparently they're going to have a, a, vo- a voice or email or something vote to nominate Joe Biden before the deadline, and the convention is kind of like a non-event now. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm surprised they could. They can't organize a one car funeral. on this Gaza bridge is falling apart. <laughs> that was so. <laughs> pull out. Of it. <laughs> and Afghanistan was a disaster. I mean, these are these are not people that are good at lead, leading things. These, these are pure, uh, you know, back slapping politicians. You know, one one hand rubs the other type of people. They're not the champions of industry. Have run corporate uh, corporations to success. They haven't run anything to success. So I, I, I can totally see them not being able to do that. There's a you know so. Um, you know, I hope America sees it for what it is. The main thing with America right now is inflation crime and the border and the border and crime are tied together so uh if you don't think unmitigated uh, unchecked immigration will change a country ask the native americans <laughs> yeah. well or ask ask europe i mean they're dealing with this in germany and sweden and france it's out of control that these countries yeah. may not be what they were you know originally so so ron yeah, do you have any prediction on who the VP pick's going to be? You know, because they, they have all these names. I keep hearing Tim Scott's like the front runner, which I don't really care for him. I really would like uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders myself. Um, so I wanted to know who who you're rooting for. Yeah. Uh, you know, the state, South Carolina and Arkansas, they, he's already got those states. He doesn't need those states. Maybe some one more. You know, Tulsi Gal- Gabbard. Uh, Okay. Uh, obviously, Chris Gnomes shot herself in the foot and her right. ball at the same time. <laughs> uh, the, uh, um, you know, I, I, this governor of South Dakota seems like a sharp person. I think Trump tends to take pretty sharp people. I don't know if he'll do any political calculation here. And I don't know what political calculation would help him. J.D. Vance, perhaps, in Ohio. Right. Uh, you know, could, could help him a little bit. And, and so, you know, I don't know who in Michigan is. Anyone worth Michigan worth getting. But I don't know if a VP brings their state necessarily. Politicians are so, so uh, uh, shirts and skins right now that I don't know if anybody says, oh, wow, they took somebody from my state, so I'm going to, as a DP, I think I'm going to vote, you know, Trump instead of Biden. I don't think too many people do that like they used to. So I think Trump thinks about leading the country. He wants someone who can be strong on his side of the deck, would be really strong, maybe too young, maybe too brash, but they could be, you know, Trump 2.0 uh, down the road. So clearly there'll be an administration position for him. He's very sharp. I like him, uh, but maybe too young, you know, right now to do mm-hmm. that. Uh, Nikki Haley would be an interesting choice because she's a, more of a moderate, and, and uh, you know, they they've got the. You know, I've told the Republican Party, and uh, which is a part, you've got to moderate the single abortion. The abortion's really been the thing that lost the two twenty, 
I mean, you can't say minimal government, minimal intrusion, minimal government, except for this one area we're going to tell you what to do. And I get the idea of pushing it to the states, but the reality is that, you know, it made it illegal in about half the states in the country. And I just think that it's not government's role. I mean, you can be against abortion, as, which I fundamentally am, but I'm pro-choice because I just don't want government telling me what I can and cannot do. The less they tell me to do it, the more I like it, right? And it's not anywhere in the Constitution. It's not anywhere, anywhere around, you know. I think most people settle on 15 weeks, and it was in a pretty good position. And they monkeyed with it, and they really shouldn't have. And it cost them uh, a lot of judgeships, a lot of uh, lost, cost them the Senate, and perhaps the House in 2020. Yeah, it's interesting on the vice presidential candidates. So the only one I really know that made any any difference, and that was Sarah Palin. And you don't know how many people came into our Republican headquarters after she got nominated and said, they've got the ticket upside down. It should be Palin McCain. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, she, was, that, she was something well they trashed her though man the media went after her hard very well, true that, you know as i said if you're getting taken flack you're over the target so it must be something something exactly. right there so as a as a free speech person are you frustrated with all of these protesters on these campuses i mean i mean it's, it's been you know, a lot of colleges have canceled their graduations and such stupidity. I mean, I'm for free speech, but it's gotten messy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm for free, free speech, too. And I think they have the right to speak. The problem is they don't know what they're saying. And I think when a dumb person, the great thing about free speech is when a dumb person says something, you're allowed to hear it, and you know they're dumb. And so they don't really have any, it's, it's organized by, you know, Soros or Soros like operation. They're, they're giving talking points. They're giving organizational uh, charts, uh, how to handle these type of things. Campuses are so, you know, weak-willed. Uh, the ministers are. They won't kick them off campus. I mean, look, I, you, can, I, I, you can't conflate being, you know, pro-Israel with being, you know, anti-Gaza. You can't be conflated with being, you know, Israel's been too hard in Gaza, gone overboard in Gaza. You're not an anti-Semite, right? You can't. You can start calling names. You can have an opinion on if they're heavy handed They're not, you know, in Gaza. Should it have been done or not? You know, you can have an opinion on without being called an anti-Semite. You know, if you go one way or the other. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's my view is we stay out of these wars. We're over everything since World War II. Yeah, we you know, are. <laughs> Vietnam was a disaster, right? We were drugged into Vietnam by the by the CIA who lied about the Gulf of Tonkin. There was never a ship attack in the Gulf of Tonkin, so they had the Gulf of Tonkin resolution that got us in that, that quagmire. 53,000 people died. We got nothing for it. And right now, we're, my clothes are coming from Vietnam. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like the domino theory work like right, told us, you know. Then we got to, you know, it, 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 we go forward to Afghanistan, and yellow cake, I mean, Iraq, Afghanistan, yellow cake, uh, weapons of mass destruction, they tell us. We go over there, we waste $7 trillion, we're no better off. So we, we, we just sit a couple of these things out, <laughs> see what happens. We need to quit getting involved in wars because we're really not very good at it. So um, did you see how President Biden stopped by his daughter-in-law's home Sunday? And, you know, Hunter's Stanford. about to... <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, every day it's something, Ron. Uh, you know, from when Easter was the Transgender Visibility Day. I, I mean, uh, I'm so exhausted. I'm, I'm surprised that, that yeah, Biden, maybe Biden has... Maybe he's going to just sniff her hair. Yeah. <laughs> sniff her hair. <laughs> I, I'm surprised Biden hadn't come out with the, you know, take a... Take a shower with your daughter day, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. <laughs> no, and this is, this is also a weird deal. This is Bo Biden's wife and the affair with yeah. uh, Hunter and a drug-fueled affair. And then and, and now she's inviting and he never goes to Caesar, never tells you. And also he just pops in on her, you know. I, you know, it's like, you know, you know if, if, if there's witness tampering, you know, it's like Loretta Lynch. And Bill Clinton on the tarmac in Phoenix, you know, right before uh, you know, the Hillary Clinton email situation. And this is this is witness tampering at the highest level. I hope she recorded it. I mean, I don't know her relationship is with Biden, but you know, they're almost like the Biden family's almost like the mafia. They almost divide up territories. You know, brother Jim has you know parts of Delaware. Hunter has his role. You know, ten percent of the big guy. And it's just like a mafia organization of a very dysfunctional family. And say what you want about Trump, his family's solid. 
Yeah. Well, they've got each other's back. Okay. So, so the column you wrote before this week's column is entitled, It's Like Literally and Amazing. Okay. I like to use the word amazing, Ron. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, you made me laugh so hard. Uh, just your opening paragraph, you, you said, maybe I'm getting old. I remember when TV and water were free and pornography cost money. And then this, this sentence made me laugh. I remember when LGBT meant a lettuce, guacamole, bacon, and tomato sandwich my generation can actually fly into an airport or eat a sandwich without posting it on instagram (laughs) oh ron how do you come up with these cute ideas oh my gosh today i mean they they use like every other word amazing is overused i think everything's amazing you know he was you know and uh you know i I took this uh client's daughter he wanted to get that job in our industry i took her to lunch one day i haven't been starbucks in forever you know so she wants to meet at starbucks trying to help her with a career she orders her starbucks uh order and i I wasn't sure she's ordering coffee or casting a spell (laughs) (laughs) and and, and maybe i am getting old maybe i'm I'm, you know like get off my lawn type of age of my life (laughs) needs to be tightened up a little bit it's just and the up talking when they they talk everything like, like uh, I went over to his house and they they, they you know, everything <laughs> sounds like everything sounds like everything sounds like a question you know <laughs> and they sort of up talking and they just they end each sentence with a, with a kind of an up talk thing like a crescendo that need not be and, uh, so I don't know it's just it's kind of a little, little self correct here. Well, I think my my favorite line is that you wrote, I'm proud to say I ran up no student loans in college, but it did take me 12 years after college to pay off my bar tabs around town. (laughs) This is why we love you. We didn't even even have tuition. It was a party school. We didn't have tuition. We just had a cover charge the first of every semester. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. And did you see that... um, have you you probably have met Jerry Seinfeld in person, haven't you? Because you're you're so worldly. No, and... I haven't really. I've, I've met the Chappelle, but not him. Okay, well, you know, because this week he said we need to bring back uh, dominant masculinity, and I I I really want real men. I mean, because you're a real man, and all of these weak men out there. I think that's probably why the world's failing. You know, Chi of uh, China said the same thing about the Chinese men. He said they're playing video games in the basement and not being men. And I think Trump personifies that a little bit too. That's a little part of the mad men and uh, what people are missing a little bit. A strong male uh, figure. These 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 weak willed, you know, uh, milk toast uh, guys that they're wearing pedal pushers and man buns around. Uh, it's just not <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ron, what are we missing? I mean, I'm still so worried about November. Do you think we're going to take it as we wrap I our think segment? So. Things stay the same. Trump, Trump actually does better like Biden did in the basement to win in 2020. I think Trump needs to kind of be muffled a little bit. I wish he would say 20% less. I'd, I'd love to be his editor. And be the one that decides you shouldn't have said that, <laughs> you know. And he's got to stop with that hyperbole. You know, everything's not the greatest. Everything's not the worst. There's been a lot of room between the greatest and the worst. And and uh, but you're not going to change a 77 year old man. So it is. It is what it is. And uh, you know, it's, it's, you're not voting for Trump. You're voting against this this deep state, this big bureaucracy, this this permanent political class that that wants to rule your life. There's unelected officials in New York and and, and uh, D.C. And all around the country that want to rule your life. And and the trajectory of this is not not good for any of us. So true. Well, always a pleasure, Ron. And uh, we definitely will have you back. As as always, you can find Ron on Daily Caller. Check out his weekly column and follow him on X. And uh, we'll have you back soon. Thanks for being on Veronica Live. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Veronica, thanks. We'll be right back.